<laughs> you said you said you had started and all the guys start pouring their beers in. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like NASCAR. <laughs> it was a it was a start to turn it on, not to start drinking. But hey, beers <laughs> everybody. <laughs> So we are back live again. Uh, other craft beers oh. going wild. And Crunch. You usually well, want to do the lead in, but you don't do the lead in. I'll do the lead in. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do the lead in, and you do the uh, finishing. So, right, right. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> uh, well, welcome to another episode of Craft Beers Gone Wild, episode number 10. And I'm Crunch Kretzmeyer here in Chicago, Illinois. And Rod J out of Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, Hi, this we got is a Ronald from Louisiana, Beer Reviews. Some people call me Jay, Ronald J. And I am Eric. I am Thomas Metal 75. I do the Massachusetts Beer Review channel of YouTube. And I am in the southeastern portion of Massachusetts. Glad oh. to be here. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Hey, Eric. Glad to have you aboard, Eric. And uh, Ron Jay, it's always good to have you aboard, buddy. Nice to see you again. Thank you. And uh, here I have you probably not going to say that anymore. But... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, <now. laughs> Where are you losing people? We just started the show. <laughs> <laughs> Louisiana Peer Reviews will no longer be joining this. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. All right. So let's see. So go ahead, Crunch. All right. So this week, uh, Rob went ahead and uh, had to come up with the theme, and he picked the wimpy, wimpy beer sector, <laughs> in my opinion. So we have beers of five. A uh, percent alcohol or lower. Or so, you know, I'm telling you, Rod, I mean, ever since the wimpy wimpy was uh, thrown out there, um, Ron, Ron, I think you were in on that conversation with the wimpy beer, right? Were you there that night with the wimpy beer? Um, Tanya? I'm not sure because a lot of times y'all will go on a lot longer after I get off of the, of the broadcast. Uh, and I didn't watch all of the playback. Okay. Oh, but I know that I know the people's I know people's attitude toward that. <laughs> well, yeah, so, uh, was talking about wimpy IPAs and right, <laughs> oh, right. I was, yeah. I was getting angry. I was saying I I had a I took issue with um, session IPAs. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Like you got married, but your wife only will kiss you on the cheek. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wait a minute. Why am I married? <laughs> that's a pretty far drop. Like. <laughs> 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 Don't want to get you out to the kiss of the cheek. <laughs> yeah, because uh, a session IPA promises a lot and delivers very little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's more like a prom date. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> No need for the stretch limo. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we roll, Eric. This is how we roll. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, yeah, so the show, we were looking at some of the light beers as we get into some of the warmer months here. So I just figured right. a show where 5% or below just to see what might be some beers out there for lower ABV that won't weigh you down. Maybe yeah, some, right. some low mower type beers or something. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, since Eric's got his uh, beer already opened and uh, you know in his glass, I say uh, we can go ahead and let him start it off. You know, um, I got the impression that we were doing some light beer, so I brought a light. I brought the ever popular. <laughs> 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 oh, you bring a macro. Can you bring a macro? Oh, yeah, Stars and stripes, baby. Happy four. Oh, no. uh, I buy a 24 pack of uh, the Coors Banquet. 
more appropriate of it. Ron, where are you finding these guys in a van? The beer I've got, you're gonna realize the problem that you probably brought Miller Lite because you always try to put it down. With <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't honestly say that maybe maybe besides five, two, five and a half that I see a lot of craft beers that are even just five percent or less. Not yeah. lots out there that's really that low of the spectrum unless maybe you're looking at some different kinds of pseudo kind of craft beers from the major corporations. Yeah. Right, right, right. So well all right. So you got the uh Bud Light out and in there, so why don't you go ahead and uh, give us your impression and reviews of the... No, or actually, I just did this beer the other day on my beer review channel, but the impression that I get and the overall assessment that I give it is, I mean, it's if, you, if, you, if you've had light beer before, you've probably already had Bud Light. You probably already know all about Bud Light. To me, it's not, you know, anything... Ex obviously, it's not anything extraordinary, but it's not, you know... Um, you know, too terrible that you can't drink it. I don't think there's anything that's really, I mean, it does have that sort of that uh, sweet grainy, maybe it's got that green apple, that sort of that off, you know, kind of a brewing flavor there. But I think a lot of Anheuser-Busch beers have that typical off brewing kind of a, a flavor to them. It, it's it's definitely wet. It's got that wet straw, grainy corn, um, oh. sort of a sort of a wet basement cellar kind of a, nose and a taste to it. I mean, it's very, obviously it's a light beer, so it's very crisp and refreshing and easy drinking. It's a very light and thin mouthfeel. Um, and if you've had, well, obviously if you've had beers like Sapporo or Kiranichi Bun that utilize the rice like this, I mean, Bud Light's a lot less of the rice, but it has that ricey adjunct kind of a flavor you get from the Far East, those kind of beers. But overall, I mean, it's not a lot of hops. It's mainly a grain and a sweetness to it. It's yeah. again. I'd give it a C overall. It's not bad, but I don't think it's anything that's you know extraordinary or that's you know stands out uh, in my mind as a beer drinking experience. And by the way, being under five percent, this one is four point two percent. There you yeah. go. There you got it. So what, well, do you think, what do you think about the, the harsh ratings that Bud takes? I don't really think it's. I think a lot of these websites. I think the rate beers. I think Great Beer and Beer Advocate and some of some of the, the the bigger known guys on YouTube. I think they give it a little bit of a harsh rating because they already have a preconceived notion going into the the style of light beer. You yeah. have to look at this beer as being a light style lager. If you're looking at it as you know beer overall, yeah, there's a lot of other beers that are going to be much better than this one in the light beer category. But if we're looking at this beer purely as a light lager and purely as a lower alcohol percentage beer, then it's just fine. It's not spectacular, but you can't really fault it for being exactly what it's designed to be, a light style lager. That's true. That's true. And actually, you have it in a glass there. It actually makes it look drinkable. Yeah, so. this is my, uh, this is a Jack's, I don't know if you can read that, Jack's Abbey Brewing, um, a Teku style glass. Mm -hmm. Can I get thoughts about Bud Light? Sure. <laughs> that may have been the fanciest glass I've ever seen a Bud Light in. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I, did, I, I did earlier have a Chimay White in there for a review on my channel, so that's exactly why I bust this one out again. Okay. Yeah. My yeah. attitude about Bud Light is that, okay, it's been on the market 34 years. It is the most popular beer in the world, really. There was an article last year that was actually false because the article was written incorrectly <clears throat> but Bud Light is the most popular beer brand in the world um, I do drink it occasionally when I go work at bingo that's really honestly the only time I ever drank it I used to be harsher against it okay mm -hmm. my next door neighbor him and his wife they just love Bud Light I mean they they are so excited they come home from work we're drinking Bud Light so I'm kind of like what Eric's saying. It's kind—it's of, not the greatest thing. It's a little dull. Yeah, it's light. It's what, 110 calories, 4.2 percent alcohol. Yeah. But like you're saying, 
it is designed to do certain things and it does it to perfection. The price is not the lowest. Well, obviously, because they're going to price it at the premium level because it's the company saying this is a good light beer. You know, you're going to pay for this one. All right. So, but it, it's okay. You know, when I drank it at Bingo, I don't, I'm not taking every sip and saying, and I'm drinking it out of a plastic glass, a plastic cup. I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, oh, this is all right. You know, I'm not sitting there every sip thinking, oh, this is horrible. I can't believe right. I'm drinking it. I'd rather drink water. No, none of those. It has a little character, but the emphasis on the word little. But no, I don't <laughs> think there's anything bad about it. No, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go no. on. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to go on rape beer and give this a 100 out of 100. I just don't think that's stylistically appropriate to give light lagers, right. you know, high ratings. Right, but Eric, they'll give it a zero out of 100. No, no. Yeah, it's take a lot of work to get off that zero. <laughs> that 65 to 70 out of 100 is just fine in in my book. Right, but if it was right. a zero, you would not be able right. to drink it. Yeah, yeah, that would be like your 8.1 steel reserve that I always bash on, Jay. Oh, no. <laughs> So you're talking about zero is more like zero is more like camo silver ice. I don't I don't see it in New England and I wouldn't touch it if I saw it. No thank you. Like I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Yeah. It must be it must be pretty bad. Bottom of barrel bottom of barrel malt liquors that come in tall boy cans, like ten percent for a dollar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I can get like a Natty Ice for dollar nineteen, and actually, I prefer a Natty Ice to like say a Bud Light. Um, but it's going to be more than that five percent alcohol too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but but play is like when I play softball, you know, we have Bud Light out there, and it just is what it is. And if it got warm, you didn't really care about it because it really cost you that much. You just went to another can, but exactly. Yeah. But nothing, nothing really wrong. I think uh, I think you guys both hit on the head that some of the other people are a little overly harsh when talking about it. So, right, right. People, people don't really. I, I don't mean everybody, but some people that do reviewing on rape beer and beer advocate, they seem to lack perspective. Like they, they take something that's just maybe dull and they're calling it horrible. Mm -hmm. But it's really just maybe right. dull. Uh, you know, everything's not a Cadillac, but maybe you could still get to work in a Chevy Cruze, right? <laughs> hey, at one point, even, at one point, even Pinos sold, so they blew up on you. When they started blowing up, you had to get them off the road. <laughs> that story is a little bit warped too. The you want to hear about my beer? Yeah, you can go around. Yes. I'm not insisting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to run with one of those little rants. <laughs> um, keep it on track, buddy. Right. <laughs> this will be my last appearance on this show after I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, you can, you can understand. Every time we have Ron on there, he goes off a little bit about one of the beers, and we're like, are you never going to be a sponsor, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> Beer that I that I've never seen before in my neck of the woods. Let me yeah. say, let me preface this by saying, okay, I understand this is a craft beer oriented channel, and I'm the first person to say yes, I love craft beer and I buy a lot of it, and I do so many reviews on it. So we, you, you, Rajay, you know that. Oh yeah. Now, but sometimes I like lighter stuff because mm. beer does it is caloric. You can get fat drinking beer and mm -hmm. eat a lot. I'm not looking to do that. Sometimes I just want something to drink while I'm eating lunch and not have to contemplate it, okay? I just want to drink it. Everything is not contemplative. It could just be a drinking beer. Beer chicken like the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> Your <laughs> Walmart special and Rock Day Crunch. Right. Right. I've never seen that one before. Rockdale Light is sold only at Walmart. Huh. Uh, their can is suspiciously similar to Bush Light, but you know, uh, 
It's made in La Crosse, Wisconsin, at the infamous City Brewing. But those people oh. can actually do. But they can do good beer there too. You see, they they specialize in making. Uh, can y'all hear me all right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, specialize in making atrocious things like, like. Uh, four loco. Oh yeah, four loco. <laughs> uh, can you get, can you get four loco there, Ron? Oh yes, four loco gold, fourteen percent, buddy. I thought you could because you couldn't get the still reserve right, the eight point two. I thought. Well, yeah, but that's just a Miller marketing decision. Ah, okay. Yet, I think Miller didn't want the steel reserve competing with its Ice House Edge, which is also eight percent. Eight percent, yeah. Okay. They wanted to position it like, like a scale, like eight down to five point nine. So they didn't want to have it cannibalizing. But um, oh yeah, we get four loco gold, which is fourteen percent. I wouldn't touch it, but John at Zone One he bought a can and he said it was pretty good. But I can't do it. Uh, no. <laughs> no. But this Rockdale Light, uh -huh. even though it comes from the brewery that makes wonderful items like Pit Bull Malt Liquor, woo! <laughs> you know, when I bought it, I thought, oh, here we go. It's $11.76 for a 24-pack. Damn. Yeah, eleven seventy six plus tax for a 24-pack. So I'm <laughs> expecting the worst, right? I'm thinking this is going to be hell to get through these 24 cans. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't you can give it hell doing it, right? I like that. <laughs> so I was not going to waste it. Right. So, Look, it's 83 calories. That's low, right? 80 Lighter calories. than Bud Light. Yeah, and it's 3.5% alcohol. 3.5. Ah. That wow. You could drink the whole case and you wouldn't feel it, I don't think. Yeah, that, well, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm exaggerating to make a point. But that's low alcohol, right? Right, very low. But you know what? It's not bad. I was thinking, when I did the video, and the video was posted, I was thinking, like, hey, you know, this is not bad. I was expecting an F, and it's coming out as a C. You know, I could drink this. I can do this. This is comparable to, oh, well, uh, what, like Bush Light, something like that. So, But it's much cheaper. It's the cheapest beer we can buy right now. So... Obviously, a craft beer person would come at me with a bat if I talked about this too much. And I understand. <laughs> I understand that rage. Right. You know, but, you know, it's okay. It's not anything to really get deep into. It tastes like watered down beer, but it doesn't taste like watered down nasty beer because a lot of that stuff coming out of lacrosse, like beer 30 light, it tastes mm. like grape soda and roof and tar. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ew. That's a description right there. Yeah. <laughs> not, only is it watered, not only is it watered down, it has nasty flavors. Who in the world wants to drink cheap store brand grape drink? You know, like, uh, I don't know, sure, you know, grape, like grape, you know, grape, grape drink. You know, like a, a cheap store brand imitation of Kool-Aid grape drink with roof and tar. Yeah. Hell, I don't want to drink that. So this, Walmart must have told City Brewing, look, you're going to you're gonna get a big contract. You know how many people they have in the world that don't have a lot of money and want to buy a cheap beer that's not ghastly? So Walmart must have told them, don't put out the typical junk. Let the little stores sell that, the regional grocery stores. We want something good that we're not embarrassed about, and they did it. And so, hey, not a craft beer. I know I'm off the channel after this. <laughs> I, got a little, I got a little confused. But for a less than 5% alcohol budget beer, it's okay. Okay. And that's all I got to say about it. It's it's something. Is it worth trying? I don't know. I mean, what are you expecting? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it's beer. It's happy, it's, happy it's, try. It's, it's happy days, but it's not as bad as Joni loves Chachi. So put it to you like. Oof. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, you really oh, went back to that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
know if that was an insult to Joni, uh, the, uh, Joni and Chachi, or uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You ever watched an episode of Joni Loves Chachi? If you did, you'd understand my point. <laughs> our, our millennials are going to be like, who are Joni and Chachi? What the hell? <laughs> Anyone under the age of 40 is watching this program. <laughs> I am going to know what you're talking about. Don't bring that sadness into your life. Uh, please go, go, go to Google and uh, type in Joni Lunch Chachi. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> it's like a big and late marathon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't even Midnight. watch it. In fact, you know, don't even watch any Happy Days episodes after the first two seasons, honestly, because that is a – well, let's not get off on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can that tell you last rant brought, brought to you by Ronald Thoreau. <laughs> <laughs> and Rock Daly. <laughs> what you got there, Crunch? What one do you have? Wow, that's a hard one to follow up on right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually went ahead and stayed on the uh, manly side of the wimpy and went right to the 5% AVs. And I have the magic hat number nine. Ooh, okay. okay. There we go. 5%. Magic hat number nine. <laughs> you bet. Also, one of the 1,001 beers you must taste before you die. I disagree with that statement. Well, it's in the book, Eric. I can't say it's not in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Budweiser's in there too, but Budweiser's in there too, by the way. I've had it numerous times in, in New England, and I thought it was much. I liked it on tap, and I bought a six pack. And I'm like, yeah, it's definitely different than on tap. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, it's got a nice little uh, a light amber color into there. Not really chipotle. It's got a nice little head. A little frothy. Yeah, pretty good. Lace in my glass, not too bad. Uh, a little carbonation going on up inside there. Not nothing really going too excited, but uh, you got you know some nice little tight bubbles in there. Nice yeah. little tight bubbles up on the top there. Very sweet. Got a uh, very very sweet, you know, smell to it. Almost a um, kind of like a um, marijuana type of uh, that, you know, sweet grassy smell. Yeah, really sweet. So definitely gonna have a uh, you know a lot of hops in there, but uh, nice and sweet. So I really like that sweetness in there. I consider it that it's that wet grass. Uh, green. Uh, all right. Should, should I make the comparison here to this and the blue moon there, uh, Ronald? Is that the uh, that we we're trying to get? No, Eric was giving me a hard time about wearing a blue moon shirt. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I like Magic Hat number nine. Um, I have mixed feelings about number nine. I have mixed feelings, but I can. I, I, um, I, it's got a nice, you know. It's nice, it's sweet, you know, uh, for those that like that um, a little lighter, sweeter taste, it's definitely uh, sweet. Um, you definitely get that wet grass taste into it. Mm -hmm. And for me, like I said, that wet grass smell, it, it, is, very, it is very much like a uh, marijuana smell. It's a, got that grassy, green, sweet uh, smell to it. And then when you taste it, you definitely what you smell is what you taste. Um, nice and sweet. I get it right on the tip of my tongue, right on the side there. Um, it kind of goes away a little quicker than I want it to. I like it, the uh, flavor to you know stay around a little longer, but um, kind of already come in there, and now it's gone. Not really doing too much for this. Um, overall, like I said, is... Yeah, you know, it's that uh, what like Rod likes to call that wet uh, horse blanket uh, flavoring in there. Definitely the uh, wet horse blanket. Yeah. So all in all, not bad. Um, definitely would have this for the summer. Uh, definitely nice and light. Not going to drink it later on tonight when it gets a little cooler. Definitely have it, you know, about that 3:30ish uh, to uh, seven o'clock time. 
Um, works out really good. Not too light, not too heavy. Little green, if you like that greenish. I'm going to go on this one here. I'm definitely going to go a. Um, uh, I would say definite, but I'm going to go 3.75 with that. So not too bad. That, like sounds like a fair score to me. that sounds like a fair score to me. Yeah. I agree mm -hmm. with that. I have no problem with number nine. I actually liked uh, it years ago when I first had it. So. Now, I like it, but it's just that sweetness. It's really. Like I said, it's that really grassy. But it's a little bit more bolder than what I would, you know, would kind of want it. You know, with a tamed down, if it had a little bit more bite to it, I would like it a little bit more subtle, a little more earthy, a little bit more bite. This is just a little too green and a little too sweet for me. Can um, I ask a question about number nine from Magic? Yeah. Is that beer supposed to be like a flavored beer in some respects? Do they have some kind of like... Yeah, they use, they make it with apricots. Yeah, I thought so. It's kind of a strange beer. They mm. say it's a not quite pale ale. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That's what it says right here. Not quite pale ale. So. Well, but definitely, uh, definitely not a pale ale, that's for sure. But yeah, it was very good. Um, not a, you know, not a hundred percent, you know, wow. But I, like I said, I definitely have it. It's it's a it's a time zone though. This yeah. is a time beer, you know. I'm not gonna have it early when it's really hot because it's just not gonna satisfy me. Nor am I gonna have it a little later on tonight when I just want to kick back and relax. It just it's that certain mid range type uh, time. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start drinking this at around the uh, four four thirty, and then I'll go until seven. I'll definitely cut off and move to something a little stronger, a little bit more flavorful. Yeah, that. Mm. You can get you can get big bottles of that beer for like two ninety nine though I think. So it's not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty inexpensive. No. Yeah, yeah. we don't have, we don't got the big bottles here. We got like the individuals and the six packs, twelve pack. Uh, yeah. People yeah. like to slag on Magic Cat. People are always dogging Magic Cat. But I think Magic Cat makes some good beers. Why are people always putting it down like it's terrible? It's not terrible. They make interesting. They make interesting beers. You know. Yeah. Like, I usually don't drink it, even though they're sort of close to me. That yeah, look, they're right in your backyard. Right. Almost, to me, the issue is they're almost kind of too not experimental, but they sort of do a right. lot of things that you wouldn't ex that you wouldn't expect to find in a beer. All right. Uh, they they definitely push the envelope. Exactly. Ooh, ooh. Magic Cat in, in general as a brewery. Oh yeah, well, like all their little weird holiday beers. The, the, yeah, they're very good about keeping their beers nice and accessible for you know anybody that wants to pick up their beers. I think anybody that likes even the Bud Light stuff can find something from Magic Cat. They would be comfortable drinking it. Oh, I see what you're saying. They will make different things for like holiday themed beers, but they're not extreme like. They make yeah. They, they don't shy people away. Mm -mm. I like that Wilhelm scream. That was a cool little pumpkin, pumpkin beer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not quite October yet. Well, they'll roll out with those beers next month. <laughs> Good attempt at that high note there. <laughs> that, was yeah, that was that was how the name of that beer came about. But uh. Rob hmm. Halford. All right. No, it was a scream in a movie that was like 80 years ago, and 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 they they keep using that same scream mm. in all kind of right. movies because they like the way it sounds. So it's called a Wilhelm scream. Okay, oh, awesome. There you go. All right, boy, we got we got uh, Ron J here with the TV and movie trivia tonight. So uh, <laughs> tune in later. Tune in later when he starts drinking beer. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm about to drink some hot tea. <laughs> Later on, when we talk about the history of All in the Family and all the spin-offs, then uh, all right, let's see here. So, I actually I had different one. I have probably forty something beers downstairs. Whoa. And, Hardly any of them were under or 
five percent. Yeah, so, yeah. oh, Rod, Rod, be honest. <laughs> so, you saw Eric, Rod, be honest. You saw Eric did the Bud Light, so you took yours downstairs and you changed it out. I had, that's what you did. Well, um, I had two. I know I was going to look at. Uh, <laughs> I know if I wanted to look at them or not. I had the. I had one from actually Ron's area. I had the uh, a beat a Big Easy. I don't know if I wanted to look at yeah, that. Yeah, you didn't bring that one out. Yeah, and see, <laughs> <laughs> and then I had um, one from Breckenridge, the Avalanche, which I think I've done before, but I'm not oh, sure. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. So, but since we started out with the Bud Light, I figured, well, we got we could go back in different ways. Now we can kind of kick back a little bit. So. I, then we got into the one that Ron had. I'm like, you know what? We got a nice little value series going here. So I grabbed one of the value beers to check this one out. And this is actually from Joseph Brow. Oh, uh, Trader Joe's. Yeah. This is their Bohemian style lager, which I haven't had before. So this is a Chick Pelsner. I'm sorry, Chick Pelsner comes in at 5% yes, right on the dot. Time. Brewed from Joseph Brow out of San Jose, California. Now, this has been up and down for me in drinking some of their beers. I found some that were actually pretty good, and I found some that weren't. But at a dollar nine a bottle, you kind of just run the gamut and see what you end up with. Yeah. But most of those are made by, uh, who, Gordon Beers. They're pretty good. Yeah, they have different names for different ones that are making them now. Because I've had this one here where it says Joseph Brow. San Jose, I have another one that said like four plus, another one that said somewhere else. But the look on it, I mean, it pours out what you would expect to get on a beer. Nice two finger head. It's got some real nice clarity there. So you can actually see a lot of the bubble streaming action. You know, what you would expect to have in a nice check lager. Um, so not, not hating on Bud, as you can see, I actually use my Bud pint glass that I have here. It's like <laughs> that I use once in a while. <laughs> For some that may not be worthy, but uh, the decent smell off it, I mean, it's got like that same thing you will find on a lot of the lagers, that horse blanket type sourness type smell. The head is actually forming some nice rockiness from what I'm seeing here as it starts to break down a little bit, but as far as the appearance, it looks to be pretty quality. The aroma seems pretty decent. It's got 18 IBU, so you get a little bit hit of that bitterness up front. It is not as dry as some of the other beers I like, but it is nice, crisp, and refreshing on the back end. You feel the flavors definitely swirling around. The mouthfeel is pretty nice on it. I mean, it sits as a kind of that light to medium body, but. I can feel it getting up into the cheek area. I can feel it tingling, bringing up, bringing to life uh, some of the taste buds. I think for a dollar nine for something like this is pretty much a steal on this one from uh, Trader Joe's. And the thing I love about Trader Joe's is, and you got them down there, Ron. Yes. It's that you can go in there, and if they have a six pack, and you don't know if you want to like that one or not, you can just grab one. And they just charge you for the one. They don't uptick it. So right, right. Yeah, so you can just get. That's like something none of the other stores really do unless they sell individual bottles. But those are usually overcharged for what they should be. Right. right. So that's why, like you know, once a month I make a run to Trader Joe's on the way to a meeting I have in Cincinnati, and I load up because it's a great way to really test out beers. And I'm a big fan of anybody that's near Trader Joe's. They should definitely check them out because there's some good opportunity there to try some beers. Now they got some over there that are really really bad, but they've got some good ones. Yeah, because, I mean, you get a good lineup of your craft beers, and you'll have some macros in there, but you'll also have some of their house brand stuff. So it's not a bad opportunity to try out anything and save a little bit of dollars, possibly. No, and have you, uh, have you tried the uh, Black Toad? From Trader Joe's. I've got one down there in the cellar right now. I haven't drank yeah, yet. Uh, I think that's like 4.8 percent or something. And I, I believe it's also made. I believe that one's from Firestone Walker, or it might be from uh, from Gordon Beers. But that's a really delightful black uh, brown ale. Okay. They make a beer from Belgium called Joseph's Brow. Right. Uh, oh, that's I'm sorry, Joseph. Joseph Belgian ale. It's Joseph Brow Belgian. You're saying? You no, know, it's called Joseph. Belgian ale. 
Okay. And it's like in that royal looking bottle, and it comes from uh, Martin's Brewing in Belgium. That is a very good Belgian ale, uh, golden ale. In fact, and that's a Trader Joe's exclusive as well. Yes, it's called okay. Joseph because you know Trader Joe's Joseph. Right. <laughs> I would also recommend their Trader Joe's. Uh, um, what is that one from Unibrew up in Canada? Oh, the um, the Trader Joe's. They make a Trader Joe's vintage ale, and they do a provisional golden ale. Yeah, those are all good. Uh, yeah. The ones you got to watch out for are Crunch is back. The ones you got to watch out for are the Trader Joe's. Oh, that's a good one, Eric. That's a good one, that's a good one Eric. The ones yeah. you got to watch out for are, are um, Name Tag Lager. Oh, yeah, I tried that one just to mess around with it. It was like 60 cents or something by the time you broke it down. And they have Simpler Times Lager and Simpler Times Pilsner. Those come from Minhas. Minhas is a very questionable brewing company. Yeah. They can do good work, like with Dixie Beer. Yeah. They put out some horrible, undrinkable stuff like Jaguar malt liquor, which I literally pour down the screen, and I don't pour stuff out. Um, Trader Joe's. Oh. I bought some uh, sherry from Trader Joe's. It was imported yeah. from Spain. It's called Patro. Pa Mm -hmm. Pastora, Pastora cream shake. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't too happy with it. And I have some brandy from France that I bought at Trader Joe's. It's called Pierre Duchenne, French brandy. Couldn't okay. find out, couldn't find any information on the internet about it, so that's got me a little worried. But, <laughs> but I agree with what you're saying, Roger. It's, it's worth trying it because it's so cheap anyway. You don't lose much. Yeah. Right. And something like this one. I would pick this one up again. I actually like this flavor. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier about drinking like Bud Light playing softball. If I was like playing softball or something and wanted to grab a six pack to take, then I would definitely take a look at this Joseph Brown Bohemian because I think the whole the whole amount it was like six, maybe around six fifty four for a six pack, which would have been not too bad at all. Mm -mm. Um, and the way that flavor kicks around, I'm not a huge lager person usually. But I am enjoying the flavors I'm getting off of this one. I think this one actually holds pretty well. And to be such a value beer, I think it really helps even stack it up a little bit more. So for me, on a beer like this, I'd actually probably, on a 1 to 5 scale, I'd look at this one actually probably being at about a 3.5. So for me, I think it's solidly drinkable. I think it's got nice, pleasing qualities. It's something, if they're all like this, I would say it's pretty dependable or something you can rely on to give you this certain type of flavor. And the kicker is it's going to leave a few more dollars in your pocket. So for me, I think it's a great value play for the money. Mm -hmm. Hey, can uh, you hold that uh, beer up to the camera again? I didn't get a look at it. Yeah. The I Joseph Brown. Right the uh, okay. Style Lager. Now, this is exclusive to Trader Joe's. And I don't know how many they have around the country, Um you got them up by you too, Eric, right? Yeah, they're, I, I live about 15 minutes from Gillette Stadium, and they got one right at Patriot Place at Gillette Stadium. Okay, uh, so I know they're obviously Ohio, uh, Massachusetts, where Ron's down Louisiana, so they're kind of in different places. I know they're out west, but yeah, if you get a chance to check them out, I would definitely recommend it. Well, look, well, look before I get off of here, let me say this. Trader Joe's has not been in Louisiana very long. It's only been in Baton Rouge about four or five years. And the one in New Orleans is not quite ready to open yet. Um, we don't get Aldi. Aldi is the owner of Trader Joe's. Aldi is a German discount grocery store. Oh, we just got Aldi. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. They own Trader Joe's, and they've owned it since 1979, from what I could find out. Maria Devon, the girl next door, she told me uh, she doesn't like Aldi. She said she finds that they're... Uh, a lot of their food products are inferior. I, I don't know. I've never bought any food. I've never bought any food from Aldi. and um, I've honestly bought almost no food from Trader Joe's. My experience at Trader Joe's is just beer, wine, and liquor. So okay. I don't want to judge them. I don't want to judge them bad. Oops. But, you know, one thing about Trader Joe's, Rajay and um, Eric, is wow. they have a lot of good craft beers. Like, you can get Bigfoot barley wine ale and yep. Dixie beer and Dixie lager and a bunch of Evita beers. And um, they sell a lot of Louisiana brands like uh, 
Coco Three and uh, yeah, I would I would I definitely recommend I would totally Coco. recommend that Trader Joe's it, that vintage ale and that provisional golden ale. They're like seven ninety nine for a seven fifty milliliter bottle, and yeah. I have experienced over the last couple of years aging them, and they age pretty nicely for as cheap as they are. But they're but again, it's like Jay said, they're made by Uni Brew, so they're made by a legitimate craft beer organization and company. Yeah. Yeah, and you know who owns Unibrew? Who? Unibrow? No, Unibrew. Uh, it's owned by um, Sapporo. Really? Really? Sapporo. I would not have thought that. Yeah, Sapporo of Japan. And another thing, you know who owns Sapporo? Mitsubishi. A car really? company owning a beer company. That's a little bit <laughs> You can check me on that if you want, but I bet you I'll win that bet. Wow, that's crazy. Hard to believe, but how many beers have you drank from Mitsubishi? <laughs> 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 they have some bizarre things in this world, you all. As yeah, well. they do, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of these companies own other companies. You would just figure it out. I guess yeah. Sapporo in 2006 started using bar oh, yeah. barley that was grown oh, in yeah. outer space on the International Space Station. Wow. Wow, on the space station. Yeah, they're crazy, I guess. And here's one more thing. You can you can find out a lot of weird things when you study food products. Okay, you know how I was doing that as kind of a joke, Eric, the uh, Vienna sausage reviews? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yummy. That's sort you know, of why like you make all those Vienna sausages? I saw you do that on the video before. <laughs> what? I saw you doing Vienna sausage one time on the video. You were doing, like, some research with them. You were just messing around. No, I was doing it as kind of a joke because somebody had made a comment, so I said, you know what? You know what? I'll review every Vienna sausage. sausage I can <laughs> Since you made that comment. Uh, but, um, wow. Because instead of getting angry about something, I just say, hey, I'll do it. But um, Exactly. But now I got people are saying, hey, you know this guy? He's like really into Vienna sausage. Ask him. He knows all about it. I'm like, wow, well, he knows how to do it. Well, at least they said, at least they said Vienna. Huh? I said, at least they said Vienna. Uh, <laughs> I was no, making, uh, making a joke. Uh, <laughs> Eric, Eric gave me the finger on that one. He's like, no, no, no. 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 Uh, you you know, know. It's an interesting yeah. fact when you do these kind of things. I'm going to hold it. Even if you're doing it as like a joke, you can learn some interesting things. Here's what okay. I didn't realize. You've heard of dial soap, right? No. Right. I mean, everybody's heard of dial soap. It's like a major soap brand, right? Dial Corporation. I, th I think they used to own uh, General Hospital, that soap opera. You remember that? I think at the it would say uh, a dial corporation. But anyway, do you know that dial soap was started by Armor Meat Company, the people that make really? Wow. Oh. I did not know that. Yeah, 1947. I was shocked by that. So, so a lot of, a lot of interesting facts. Yeah. Are we saying that under 5% by alcohol volume, beer goes well with Vienna sausage? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you do dial soap. <laughs> I, think, I think... Yeah, and I think lockers especially pair well with Vienna yeah. sausage. Probably. Well, yeah, I would definitely say that. <laughs> especially cheap lockers. But not, you know, anyway, you know, I'm just... Or pretzels. I'm just talking. <laughs> but it's true. It's Emma Claus. No, no, no. <laughs> Emma Claus and Vienna no. Sausage. Let's not try that. <laughs> well, Eric, you cracked open an IPA. You want to talk about that one? Yeah, I, um, 6.43%. So it doesn't work, but it's a lot better beer. <laughs> you have to stop. <laughs> It's the Oscar Blues IPA. Never had that one. Just got a single of it the other day in a mix of six. It's they use um, Enigma Sick Secret Ella Topaz and Galaxy Hops. And it's 70 IBUs. And they even talk about it having a raspberry kind of a flavor. I don't notice no. much of any kind of a... I mean, I can kind of understand where they come out with raspberries, but it's more of like a as they say, a passion fruit, a pineapple, a citrus is definitely some of that orange juice. It, it, it kind of has 
the multi notes that you would get from a West Coast style IPA, but it has the um, that juicy smell that you would get from something like a Heady Topper or any of your Trillium beers, or I've not had Treehouse beers, but I assume Treehouse beers are pretty uh, citrusy in, in, in the hop juice quality department, and it definitely has a taste like that. You know, that Crutch was talking about his beer sort of having that, I say marijuana in quotation marks, that kind of that dank, um, green, right. earthy, right. kind of a grassy flavor to it. I'm definitely getting right. that. Um, it's got some of the caramel maltiness to it. There's a little bit of that piney resinous quality. I think at 70 IBUs, the 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 malt quality is playing perfectly with it. It's it's no. a pretty dry beer. It's got some um, pale malty, bready biscuity kind of a sweet note to it. And I think it's got a lot in common with a juicy New England style IPA and the the resinous and the um, the piney notes of a West Coast IPA. So if you like both of those things, this mm -hmm. is a pretty nice style beer. They call it a meta, M-E-T-A, a meta modern IPA. So I would give it probably a high B plus, maybe around an 87 or 88 out of 100. Wow. 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 I'll yeah, I, don't know why I, I don't know why I haven't done that one yet. We get a lot of Oscar Blues beer here, but I just... I haven't gotten around to drinking that one. And might I add, this is probably a medium style body of beer. It's crisp, it's pretty clean, it's dry, and it's very refreshing. I thought it was an A beer personally, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too far apart with nine with eighty seven. Well we're all we're all the subject of our universes, right? So depending on what That's we right. get added along those lines, we all gonna have different I'm, I'm a little spoiled being about twenty five minutes away from uh, Trillium brewing company, if anybody no yeah, I know, I know about Trillium. I haven't had any of their beers, but I know about like the taste yeah. of orange oh. juice mixed with hops. Yeah. Mm. Well, Eric, I think I grade beers too high anyway, you know, so I'll admit that. I probably, you know what I mean? I, you, You've watched my videos over the years. I, right? gave, I gave Shimei White when I reviewed it this evening. I gave that an A, but really to me, when, I, when it gets to being, you know, a world-class beer, I got to take a – a couple of sips of this beer instantly know that this beer is amazing. Instantly, it has to be have an amazing quality to me before I say ninety five or above. Yeah, well, Shemay is like a world me. class for me. I've had all of the red, the blue, and the white, but it's again what you what you have because once you put it against Devel nine thousand, mm -hmm. it, it knocks it off, and that's like the best one I've had. So exactly, yeah. Uh, those are all so great. Yeah. Well, the the uh, I don't know if you've ever had those ones from uh, what are they? Uh, who makes those, Eric or Thomas Metal? The Bornum and the Bornum Double, the Bornum Triple, the uh, Pirat. The mm. Pirat uh, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 um. yeah. Who's that company? Um, Pirat. Um, Oh, P I R A. You know all those great beers. Yeah, there's I can I, I couldn't begin to pronounce these beer company names. I but I know exactly the beer that you're talking about. And the Gutendrock and the Gutendrock 9000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm in love with those beers. You're talking about uh Brauerei van Steerberg. That's oh, it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Von Steenberger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Owned good. by the uh, Global Beer Network. Yeah, Johnny. Uh, Johnny. Um, yep. Yeah, Johnny. And yeah, so those are good. Those are good beers. Those are. And they look like I look on Untapped. They're like getting an average rate of three point seven three, which oh, is get out of here with that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Careful when you drink those beers, and I even noticed it with the with the Chimay White. Instantly, when I pulled that cap off of the beer, is when all of its fizzy, foamy head started to gush out of the bottle. Yeah, that's the problem I had with that gluten drug. It blew up and it went all over my car. <laughs> we're so we're saying crutches. Crutch is mad because we're saying German words incorrectly. <laughs> 
Well, I know the brown eyes, right? Because I looked it up. They said that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> yes, that's an easy one to pronounce, brown eyes. <laughs> oh, you be amazed. <laughs> Perost. <laughs> People going around brewers and stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, well, Crunch, you got another one there, right? Ah, uh, yes, yes, my. Uh... 5% again, I went on the heavy side, but this is the one that uh, scares us here, Mr. Uh, Rod J. Uh -oh. I went ahead and had the Shorts Brew Space Rock. You still got some of those around, huh? <laughs> no, you know it. You Space Rock. Never heard of it. Never heard Space of it. Rock. Hey, but look, I'm going to go, I'm gonna have to go, y'all, but I really appreciate you joining. I'm glad you didn't kick me out of your group for bringing this. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming about, Rod. We always enjoy having you, buddy. Thank you, and I appreciate it. And y'all have a good night and a safe weekend. You too, brother. Uh, happy Thank, you. Thank you. All right, now, Eric, if, uh, if you watched any of the uh, craft beers gone wild, you would have seen this one pop up once before. <laughs> and the uh, problem with this guy here, it, this one here, it made with, Space Age technology. Oh, wow. We're talking about oh, yeah. beer now. Oh, yeah. So right, here on the, right here on the bottle, my friend. Right here on the bottle. And, uh, so uh, every time I do a review with this, I get booted off. My, uh, computer, my computer, they infect my computer, and next thing you know, I freeze up, and boom, I'm gone. What? So, Maybe yeah. that's why you got. Maybe that's why you got kicked off earlier. They knew you were going to talk about that beer tonight. I know. I, I had it right here. I had it sitting right here next to me. Um, but now this one here is out of um, out of Elk, Elkhorn, Michigan. So up in the uh, upper part of Michigan. So we'll give it a little pour out here. Now this is that five percent alcohol. I forgot the um, the IBU. What did you remember on this one, uh, Rob? On you that one, a, I remember. Yeah. I'm reading. I'm reading on their website that it's 72 IBUs and it's actually 6.15 percent alcohol. Oh, it's just on here. Five, well, they six, did a, five, they did a right on here. Repackaging. I don't know if they did a re. They did, they say they did a repackaging after the first of August of 2015, and it's been okay. gluten removed. Uh-huh, yeah, because this one still has the gluten-free uh, on it, but they cannot, it's kind of funny how it's written, because, uh, oh, remember that, Ron, the whole writing of the gluten on yeah. this. And they also uh, say Space Rock sold on tap may contain trace amounts of gluten from beer yeah. previously. Yeah, well, this one here says that the uh, American Pale Ale Hop with the Small gusts, okay, and little nougats of alien technology. Wow. This has got alien technology, people. I do not recommend anybody who is not a professional to drink this. <laughs> you know? The guy looks like he's riding on so, a you know, snowmobile on the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the guy That's I'm looking at. All right. Yeah. He's a, that's right. That's a. That's not a snowmobile. That's a space flyer, man. Oh, that is the oh space, a space flyer. The space flyer, or for people in Kentucky, a space glider, man. So, so you have the version of the beer yeah. that has the that's gluten free, apparently. Oh yes, yeah, right is there, it, right is there. Is it right like a Morgan beer, or what is it? What, what's that taste like? Well, we're gonna find out here. Right. So. First of all, we got very nice and light. Um, it's got that uh, you know yellowish mist in there. Um, yours is a little darker than mine, I think. Yeah, just a little bit darker than yours. Got a little bit more of a frothy head on there. Yeah. So um, no carbon action in the inside. So lacking on that department. Now this one here has just got a nice sweet nose. Doesn't have that uh, grassy at all. 
It's just got a nice little sweet hops. You can definitely tell that's hops. For those, for anybody who's ever uh, had hops in their hands and crushed it up and smelled their hands afterwards, you can definitely tell there's definitely hops in there, nice and sweet and greeny, but it's not that, uh, as I you know pointed out before with the other one, that nice marijuana and wet green. This is kind of a nice, just regular dry green in there. Ah, that's really good. I like that. It's just a nice, nice, easy, subtle flavor. Now, it's got bitter right off the bat on the side, kind of quenches in there, and it, you know, pulls in your cheeks with the tartness in there. I like it. It's got a nice, like I said, it's got that nice little, um, it's got a zing to it. Almost like a, almost like if it had, um, you know, uh, almost like a little carbonation water, a little zing on there. Like sets or water or something? Yeah, kind of like yeah. that, but just yeah. a little. It's got a carbonation zing, point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can tell like there's something on there. It's really good. I like it. Uh, definitely got that tartness. Like it's like you just licked the outside of an orange. You know, it's got that dry. It's got that dry citrus flavor. So you had that dry citrus flavor licking up on the tongue, pulls in on your cheeks. I like this. It's my type of uh, my type of beer. I'm definitely gonna drink this one. You know, when it gets when it's cooler, nice. You know, at nighttime, but. When it's uh, during the summertime, it's not going to be to me. It will not be a uh, winter uh, type beer, but it's definitely this summer, a little uh, wimpier, you know, level. I'm not going to drink it when it's uh, you know 85 degrees out or anything above uh, 80, but I'm definitely going to drink it when it gets a little cooler out at the nighttime, um, around the uh, you know 75 degree, 78 degrees, right in there. Perfect. Really good. Uh, I like that, and um, I'm probably going to go on that one there. I'm going to go 4.1. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And if I remember correctly, I don't remember. I didn't, you know, I should have researched what I gave it last time, but I think I was right around that same number. Yeah, I was, liked it. It was just over a four or so, I think. You liked four. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing is, I don't know if I got the number out right or stuff because I probably got zapped right about that time. You know, was, uh, oh. was taken was taken to another dimension. And stuff, I remember, right? <laughs> well, you're, yeah. you're usually pretty careful in your numbers anyway. So, like Ron was saying, yeah. a little higher. You're usually a little bit, a little bit not lower, but you're definitely a little more tighter on them. So, yeah. Well, I'm a little bit more conservative, you know, just due to the fact that. There's a lot of things that put in play to it. For yeah. Me. You know, like I said, I'm, you know, um, Eric, I don't know if you know, you know, like I do, uh, I'm a sommelier and stuff, so I do a lot of uh, wine you know, okay. reviews and stuff. Um, and um, I don't, I'm sure you're familiar with Costco. We have one out there by you guys. Yes. So I'm their wine advisor for 576 stores. Yes. So I work in that area. But um, yeah, like I said, this is. Um, this is right there. It's good. I like it, and it's what it's what I would be looking for. Even with all the space age technology and the uh, you know <laughs> and all that. Yeah, that's right. And you know, even being gluten free, I'm still going for it. Being healthy and alienated. So uh -oh. I'm, I'm definitely I'm definitely liking it. Well, I guess you got to try Alien Einstein next. Yes. style pale lager. <laughs> Their website's got some crazy looking beer labels and different kind of beers on it. They're space age and far out, man. There you go. There you go. I will live long and prosperous. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do this one, I guess. And no not, light. not really motivated as much on it, but I needed to get another beer in. and oh, man. No light. 
I figured I'd get a Mexican one before Trump kicked them all out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, what you do? The, the Cerveza, Cerveza Cantina, and this is from Industrious, Industrias Las Constancia, something like that. <laughs> I haven't taken Spanish for like 30 years or something, but um, <laughs> this one is a 4.5% pale lager. I guess a lot of the lagers are the lower ABVs, though, because that's what I usually see more of, it seems. Mm -hmm. right. And this is one that, I guess, you know, is your typical Mexican beer. I'm not a huge Corona fan, but it's kind of along those lines as well. You know, it's always like when you see that clear bottle, you're like, you, gotta, you know you got to drink it by a certain time usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before it gets bottled. Right. Yeah. Before, it gets... <laughs> before they discover they have a whole stash of green bottles in the warehouse. <laughs> before it goes anywhere, just give it to me right now. Uh, but, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, it, it pours out a decent looking beer. You can see there, you see all the carbonation taking place. So, definitely highly active. The head itself. Pretty much a white head. It's going to break down here in a little bit, I know, but it does have a little bit of rockiness as it starts out there. Um, for anything you look for a cerveza, you always look for that clarity. It's got the nice golden straw color to it. Just flows very nicely, so you put that in front of you. It's a decent-looking beer. Looks like um, a campaign, practically. Yeah. It's funny. When I think of beer sometimes, I always think back to, uh, since Ron was talking about movies earlier, um, the Mexican beers go back to Steve Buscemi in... The movie he did with Antonio Banderas down in Mexico, um, where Antonio Banderas is like the killer, the guitar playing. Shooter. Oh, are you talking about Once Upon a Time in Me no, Mexico? Um, no, Desperado. Desperado, right? When he's at the bar talking to Cheech about the beers, like getting the Mexican beer. <laughs> That's this is always a vision, like the Mexican beers and stuff, you know? Exactly. Right on. <laughs> but um, great movie. Again, with the lager. I still get that yeast smell out of it, which is basically that horse blanket. It has somewhat of a refreshing type quality as far as a lager would go, I guess you could say. I mean, it doesn't really smell bad, but it's not really any hops. It's all malt pretty much up front on it. Now, on the taste, it goes in fine. It's not really too bitter up front. It's one you can easily drink on a hotter day that you can act, just knock on back and not have any issues with it. Any bitterness is at that tip of the tongue. And then on the back, it's crisp and refreshing. But what I get from it, it's kind of like an aftertaste, almost like a type of staleness or something with the yeast. Huh. The flavor gets around, but it almost feels like there's something thrown off on it, but I know it's supposed to be that way from drinking a lot of lager. It's just something I don't like about the taste of the lager on the back end, that after that aftertaste of it. I think at this lager versus what I did the first time, the Czech Pilsner lager, that's more the style I would prefer than what this one would be. You know, this what, I'm thinking? You know what I'm thinking is 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 one of the characteristics of of a of of an oxidized beer is it having that stale kind of a flavor. I'm wondering if that has some kind of properties of the oxidization happening where where it didn't get it didn't get bottled quick enough and and, and more of the the air got, you know, more of the atmosphere and the air got into the beer and sort of caused it to have that kind of stale flavor. Um, it could, could be a flavor of the brewing process. Yeah, I mean, it could be, but then I've had it on so many other lagers. I'm kind of just thinking maybe it's supposed to be there. I think it's the yeast. For me, what I taste, I think it's the yeast that they use to make lagers, right, because it's more of a bottom fermenting yeast. Yes. And maybe it's a special type they're using that I'm just not used to. I drink a lot more L's than lagers. Yeah. Um, it's not bad. It's not horrible. The first time I had this one, I think I might have rated it as a two. Having it the second time, which is why I wanted to go back again and try this one, I think it's, it's a little better than that. I think it's probably about maybe a two and a half instead of a two. Um, this one, it, it has everything with it. I still get that flavor. It's just getting used to that taste. It's like when you were younger and you were first trying beer, it's a matter of acquiring a taste at a certain point. It's almost like 
the same type of thing with this type of lager. It's acquiring that taste to really enjoy this one. Um, I've had beers that were a lot horrible than this one, but just like I said, the second time it does taste a little bit better. Maybe the first time just threw me off a little bit. But I, it's just hard for me to place anything besides like kind of that horse blanket type of aroma and that it's like a sour type taste that's part of it, but it's not like your sour beers. It's just a sour part that's part of the yeast they use to do the lager. So, you know, over time, you know, in a, in a, in a Mexican restaurant, I wouldn't probably even have this one because I'm not, like I said, a huge Corona fan. I get the same thing from that. But you take something like a Dos Equis, which is a little bit different to me and how I can drink that one versus this one here. So it's not one that really jumps out to me, but maybe... I think it's like a, I think it's like a big seller for a lot of places. A lot of places seem to sell this from a lot of the. Uh, we have Kroger up here, and they sell a lot of it. It seems, but outside of that, I'm not too sure where else you may find something like this. But it is what it is. So anybody that like knows more about Cerveza Lagers, you know, put some comments in the comment section. All I can say because it's just a curious type beer. But I can drink it, so <laughs> so that works out too. It was like crunch to get knocked off again. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> well, he was using Chrome before I told him to stop using Chrome because I was having issues, and he started using Firefox. He seemed to be fine, and I don't know what's going on now. I, just, I literally just turned into the opposite. I'm having problems with Firefox, so I went to Chrome. Uh -oh. <laughs> I seem to be happier that way. Although I, I think Firefox is really weird about their plugins, and I had a plugin, you know, last week I still had Firefox. I had a plugin that I just downloaded for Flash, and they have not updated their Flash plugin, so it's from like three years ago. Their Flash, so you got to keep, you know, you got to keep downloading the Flash because their plugin is old from Firefox. Yeah. Oh yeah, great! I can't watch any of these peer reviews now. What? Well, the other thing it might be is this Google's just, you know, as good as they're supposed to be, they get kind of crappy on some of this stuff, too, because a few times I set up for these Hangouts and they don't work. I have to go back in and do a new link, and it's like, it says your auto uh, input or something didn't, didn't connect right. It's like, what the hell? Oh, look, we got Robin uh, Williams here. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I mean, you know, it's those aliens, those damn aliens. They took me away and stuff, and I don't know what they did to me. Yeah, I have no recollection. Can't what a crutch uh, as many disguises. Uh, actually, I thought I, I, got, I thought I looked like Eric a little bit. You know? <laughs> I thought I, you know, I got the stash going on. If I had you know? seven more beers, maybe my nose will turn red. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely some interesting beers tonight. So yeah, that was cool. Kinda, I don't usually do a lot of the light ones, and it was something different. And I told Crunch I was running out of some different ideas, and I said, we'll do like a 5% or below. You know, I think that's a challenge. If you guys have – I may I'm even try it. If you guys have craft beer stores or, you know, big liquor stores that you can do singles on, try to just buy some crafts that are 5% and under. See if you can even do that. Oh, yeah. That would be difficult, I think. Yeah, like I said, oh, the only, yeah. I, I found the two um, – that I mentioned, like the Breckenridge Avalanche, the Abita, yeah. Big Easy. Um, now, I do also know that you can get, like, the 21st Amendment down to earth is a session IPA, and that's under 5%. Um, there's another session one out there. I can't think of who it is. But, yeah, it gets really kind of more into a slimmer type yeah, area. You try to find IPA them. from Firestone. Maybe you're thinking of that one. That's 4.5%, actually. That's 4.5%. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, the thing that, yeah, the thing that we have, Eric, yeah, the problem that we have, Eric, is, you know, it's like we started, when we first started, we were doing particular, you know, beers and stuff, and as you know, you all, you can't always get, you know, the craft beers aren't always widely um, distributed, mm -hmm. so not everybody can get it, so, right. you know, we kind of changed the model just a little bit and started going with, um, you know, more themes and stuff, exactly. so... So now we're just trying to keep different things. And even that's a little hard because you kind of, you know, you kind of run out. But, I mean, you know, you can always do it. I mean, heck, you can do one on uh, weird labels, you know, Fan the, the weirdest label, you know. And, uh, you know, everybody goes out and tries to find one that's got the weirdest label. And then, you know, and maybe Rod J will give out his T-shirt with the one that's got the weirdest label. 
Uh, <laughs> trying to get a t- I haven't even sold a t-shirt yet. You mean just give it away? <laughs> I'm like a small craft brewery here trying to just make margins right now. <laughs> but, but yeah, but even small craft breweries went ahead and, you know, gave out oh. samplers and tasters. Come on, you're man. You're going to Vegas with $100 in your pocket and you're just trying to break even. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Come on, Ron. <laughs> wow. But uh, yeah, it was great. You got definitely got a chance to sit in. I saw your. Uh, your YouTube as well, Eric, so I hit you yes. up on that, too. So right. if you want hey, to hit Rod, back and Rod. check it out, too. Hey, hey Rod, let's go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll cut off our, our, on this one here, and then we can continue afterwards. Okay. Here. That's okay. our, so. CB, our overtime, craft beer overtime. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey. Do that. Well, all right. Well, that's another episode of Craft Beer Gone Wild number 10. And as always, I'm Crunch Kretschmar here in Chicago, Illinois. And Rod J. out of Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. Massachusetts Beer Reviews, Thomas Metal 75, in Southeastern Massachusetts. All right. Well, we're always glad to have you, you in. And if you ever want to go ahead and uh, sit in with us and, uh, reviews, and uh, review some beers and stuff, hit up Mr. Rod J. Just type in Rod J. He's all over the uh, web. He's far and wide and well-known throughout. So just go ahead and type him in. All 76 pages will pop up, get him a link, <laughs> and he will go ahead and uh, let you know what's going on and hook you up. So, as always, Mr. RJ, give us the closing. Keep drinking good craft beers, and we'll see you next Thursday at 8 o'clock. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>